Santo és tu, Senhor. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord Jesus. Verse to the word of the Lord. <laughs> we are already standing. Let's open our Bibles. In the book of Psalms, chapter 42. Psalms 42. Psalm 42, it can be verse 1, and then we'll skip ahead. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. Now let's read verse 3. This says, My tears have been my food day and night while they continually say to me, Where is your God? Lord, we praise you. We are thankful because this moment in which we have had fellowship with you and we ask that in your word we may bless your people in your church. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. The church may be seated. The soul, when the soul wants to serve the Lord in their appropriate time. This is the title of the psalm. Yearning for God in the midst of distresses. In the word of the Lord says the following. The servant of the Lord that wrote this psalm. He was not in Jerusalem. He was in exile. He, was, he had been deported. It was, he had no nation. And the place where he was, they were, was a place, it was desertic, it was a desert. And in this place, which was a desert, there was scarcity, scarcity of water and food. The psalmist was able to observe nature and when he looked at nature, the word says that he saw he was able to contemplate a deer. And there are many deers here in the United States. And he realized that the deer was, was crying out. He was crying out. And we can use a word that we, we can use a word that we use a lot here was pleading when we plead when you cry out when you shout this is uh, a cry for help a request of help so the uh, servant he was pleading he was asking asking for help and we only ask for help when our lives is at risk. When, when you are well, you don't ask for help. But when you are in distress, your life is at risk, you plea, plead for, your, for help. Cry for help. And the word says here that the, the deer was panting. The deer was panting here because there was a great need. And what was the need of the servant? And why was the servant panting? Because he was, he was thirsty. And like the deer pants for the water, brooks, brooks, he was also panting for the water brooks because he was a play, in a place of drought and affliction and his life depended on it. 
If he didn't drink water, he would surely, he would surely die. And I remember the Samaritan woman, the passage of the Samaritan woman, she was thirsty, it was at noon, and she went to pick up water at noon, but she didn't find the water for this life. She found the water that allowed her to jump into eternal life. It was a spiritual water. She found in Jesus. And it's, uh, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. So in this, he noticed that in the same way that the deer was panting and the, the deer was seeking the water brooks, the deer wanted to quench its thirst. That's how his life was in the same way. The same need that the servant had was his own need. The, the, the same need of the deer was his own need. But the word says, my brethren, that so the deer uh, needed water for this life. And the psalmist here, he wanted water, a different water, because his thirst was different. It was not a physical thirst. You, if you're a thirsty, a physical thirst, you just drink a glass of water, you quench your thirst. Because uh, you drink water and you get thirsty, but then after a while you get thirsty again. Remember the Samaritan woman? Jesus told to the Samaritan woman, if you drink the, off of this physical water, you get thirsty again. But if you drink of the water that I give you, it will become a fountain of water in your heart that will jump into eternal life. And it was exactly because of this search that the deer here, the deer was panting for to quench its thirst or satisfy its need, not with the water, not H2O, the water of this life, but quench its thirst in the presence of, of the living God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. And now he asks a question, the psalmist. And maybe you who entered here in the house of the Lord tonight, you may have the same need. And to present yourself before the living God. The Samaritan woman, she presented herself before the living God and her thirst was quenched. And here the man, the servant, the psalmist says, my soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So the psalmist knew that only, only being in the presence of his God, only after being in the presence of his God, his need would be answered. Your need, my brother and sister, and my need is only answered when we present ourselves before God. And he knew that. And you went here tonight in the house of the Lord. You know this. That's why you came to this place. Because your soul thirsts for this God. This God who is alive. This God that speaks to you, to me, to each one of us. That this God who reveals himself. This God who is merciful, whose grace, whose love. This God that gave his life for you, for me, for each one of us. My soul thirsts for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? And now there is an interesting question here. When shall I come and appear before God? Have you thought about it? Have you asked this question to yourself? However, there was a problem there. He wanted to present himself before God. But he didn't know where God was. 
And because he was unable to go, because he was unable to come into the presence of God, present him before him so that his, the need of his soul would be answered and the thirst of his soul would be quenched. Imagine the situation of this individual in those days. It is written the word, my tears have been my food day and night. So until he was able to present himself before God, he was going to be in tears. And no one cries day and night because they are happy. You can cry of happiness for a short time, but if you cry day and night, it's not because of happiness. It is affliction, it's pain, and it, it is suffering. Day and night, or night and day. So, in other words, constantly, his soul was in affliction. Constantly, his soul was suffering. And the only antidote, the medicine, so that his soul would stop suffering would be if he would be able to appear before God. And it is interesting, my brethren, that no one showed up to tell him where God was. But people asked him where his God was. And many times we're going through a moment of affliction, of pain and suffering and anguish and of absence of God in our lives. Who have, has gone through this? Depressed. And the people knew that this individual, he was a believer. He was a servant of God. That's why he wrote a psalm. He was a son of Abraham. He was an Israelite. And this individual here had already gone into the house of the Lord. It is written. That's what it says here. Oh my God, inside of me, my soul is tired. But I remember of you since the land of Jordan. So he was in the land of Jordan. He was born in Jordan. You remember Jordan River? What happened in the Jordan? river what happened there something very important when the people of God enter into the promised land they went through the Jordan River and uh, the water the waters departed and they crossed the river with dry feet and also there is another one Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River remember also Naaman a general where was he healed in the Jordan River the Jordan River typifies typifies Jesus the Holy Spirit. So he was, he inhabited, he resided, he was even born, born on those lands, the land of the promise, the land where it flows honey and milk, the land that the Lord has promised to his children. And in that land, all his needs were answered. So he was in the presence of God. But one day, he left the presence of God. And he says like this, my friend. I remember Hermon. And it's, uh, since the small mountain, and there's a psalm that says it fall, it speaks about the Mount Hermon. It's like an oil that comes down through the beer of Aram. So he speaks about the dew from Hermon. So he speaks about the place where God orders his blessing. So he was in the presence of God where the, the Lord orders the blessing. When the Lord comes to Moses and says, I will bless the children of Israel and gives an order to his brother Aram, who was a priest, May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May I have mercy of you. And may the Lord may raise your face and give you peace. That's how I will bless the children of Israel. And he received this blessing from the Lord. The blessing of being made a child of Israel. Of being made a son of God. A child of God. I 
I have gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With, great, with the great multitude that celebrated. There was someone that went into the house of God. And we went there with great joy. And in the house of the Lord, he celebrated. He rejoiced. He praised the Lord. I rejoiced when somebody told me, let's go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are at your doors, O Jerusalem. So this individual here was just like us. Because when he went to the house of the Lord, he rejoiced and praised and glorified the name of the Lord. However, his soul was perturbed, was discouraged. But there was for him a hope. And he says the following. I will praise him in his presence. Christ in us, hope of, of glory. There is still a hope. If the tree is cut, if at the roots wither under the ground, at the smell of the waters, it will be born again. You will sprout again. And the God of this individual here and our God is a God that gives us hope. I went with them with a voice of joy, rejoicement and the memories and the good memories. Whoever is 10, 15, 20 years has good memories. You know why all our memories are good? God has always been good to us. I remember you from the time of Jordan. I remember the moment in which the Lord visited me with the Holy Spirit, baptized me with the spiritual gifts. I remember the time when God prophesied as to prophesy regarding my life, and that prophecy was fulfilled. I remember of the healing, of the deliverance that the Lord has given me, the doors that the Lord has opened to each one of us. What a wonderful God. Oh Lord, my soul sighs for you. My brethren, in this moment in which you were like this, and who has not gone through a situation like this? Far away from God, distant from the temple, distant from the Jordan River, distant from our brethren, distant from the joy of being in fellowship with the Lord, in fellowship with God, then someone comes. It is one always present himself. Are you in this situation? Where is your God? Are you unemployed? Where is your God? Are you sick? Where is your God? Are you depressed? Where is your God? When we are well, we are doing well, the enemy does not ask us, Where is your God? But when I'm in a bad situation, the enemy of our souls appears and is going to ask, ask us, where is your God? And my, my wife has gone through a situation like this. She was going through a, a moment, a difficult moment in our lives. And somebody came to her and said, look, boy, you must have done something very bad to God because you are in such a bad situation. And someone else came to her and said, well, where is your God? Everything is going wrong in your life. Where is your God? There's a song in Brazil that says the following, if God does it, 
if the door is open. Wow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If the sick comes, sickness comes, if everything goes well, He is God. If it doesn't go well, He is God. Why is that? Because we praise Him? Because? Not because who He is. Who, who, because what He does, we love Him because who He is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Where is your God? I asked the brother. There are two brothers there on the back. I asked the brother, where is your God? And he said, my God is, my God is in my heart. Where is your God? He said, is, it is with me. Mary the Magdalene. When Jesus died, she went to his tomb to, you know, where she went to find her, her God in the tomb. Is your God in the tomb? Is your God dead? Where is your God? When she went into the tomb to seek uh, her God or give a little help to her, her God or embalm her God, and the Lord told her, Mary, he is not here. Hallelujah. So if, if anybody asks you, where is your God? My brother and sister, you can't answer. My God is not in the tomb. My God is alive. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And because he lives, I can believe in the tomorrow. Because he lives, there is no fear. Because I know that my life is in the hands of my God, of my Redeemer. God, where is your God? So there's a, a children's song that says the following My God is, 
is in heaven. And where else? In my heart. The God is in the world is dead, but mine has resurrected. to God. So now we know where our God is. Where uh, there are two or three gathered in my name, there God, there He will be our God. Jesus, His name is Emmanuel. That translator is God with us. And He said, I will, um, am with you every day until the end of the centuries. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it says, I'm not going to leave you orphans. I'm going to send you. Aquele consolador that is going to instruct you and teach you and prepare you to be with me in the day of my eternity. Because whatever I am, I want you to be as well. Blessed be the name of the Lord.
Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 to God. The enemy has already received his answer. He already knows where our God is. And you don't need to ask anymore. When will I be able to be in the presence of my God? You know why, my brother? Because today you came up to the house of God. Hallelujah. I went with them into the house of God with a voice of joy and praise. Today you came up to the house of God. Today you are in the presence of God. That's why your soul rejoices because God is presence, present in this place. And more than that, God is here present in your life because you are a temple of God. You are the house of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. The Lord has shown in a spiritual gift that there was a woman that had a desire like a desert. That, and when she was in the spirit of going to the house of the Lord, she was going through a moment of tribulation and anguish, and she received an invitation. And she in this invitation, the person would say that the solution to her life, to what she needed, to her needs, was Jesus. Only Jesus could give her what she needed. And throughout the service, the Lord has shown that an angel of the Lord was operating on the life of this woman and was guiding her to this place into another place. It was guiding her into eternity. And from that place in eternity, she was be able to contemplate the great love that the Lord has to for her. And my brother, when we are in fellowship with the Lord, we are led into eternity. When we leave a common place into the Holy of Holies, to the presence of Jesus, and that's her, what her soul experienced 
the joy of salvation. The Lord also has shown a woman that was going through a great trial involving her daughter. Yeah. And this problem with her daughter was causing confusion in her mind. And she realized that this difficulty as she was going through with her daughter was even putting at risk her own faith. But tonight, the, the angel of the Lord also would take her by the hand and would tell her, run. Let's go to the waters because the waters will save. And she was led to a river of calm waters where she would receive refreshing purification and strength, spiritual strength. It is another psalm that says the following, the nations that have moved, but he raised his voice and the the earth melted. There's a river whose water bring joy to the house of the Lord and sanctuary of the God Most High. The Lord is in this, the midst of those waters and the, the land is not going to be shaken. This is the river, the presence of the Holy Spirit that is present in this place and is quenching the thirst of our soul and strengthen us in His presence. And the Lord also has shown another spiritual gift, a couple. This couple was walking in the desert. And this couple was tired and dehydrated. Being dehydrated is lack of water. And they looked to a place and they saw a fountain of water. And when they went to that fountain, it was a mirage. And when we are in the desert, I never went there, but we see... A description even in movies a person is very tight very thirsty and he, that person looks and think that there's a oasis there when a fountain of water when when he gets there it's only sand what does it mean jesus when he when he speaks about your life the prophetic moment in which you are living he said is he there is he in the other place and jesus says don't go don't go. Because in the moment in which we are living, there is only one way for you to meet with Jesus, to present before God's presence. You know when? When you are guided by the Holy Spirit and you will hear a, a voice from behind you saying, this is the way. Don't go astray either to the right or to the left. And when you hear the advice of the Lord and the Holy Spirit of God, then your soul is, its thirst is quenched. And that's what the Lord has shown tonight. And this couple was doing this three times. So then we go to one church and they're going to find church. And then go to another church and they think they're going to find God there. God is telling you. The church of the Lord Jesus is not a, a sign, it's not a label, it's not a denomination. The church of Jesus Christ, you know what it is? It's a church where the ones who are in it praise him in spirit and in truth and the lord says the lord is seeking for those that adore him in this way and you went to the other churches and you found nothing only men but tonight you had a meeting with god the angel would come to this couple and would give them two uh, three supplies to them water bread and oil and here tonight they only used the oil the oil and the oil was 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 passed on their ears and why the ears because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of god so tonight the, your ears have been anointed by the holy spirit by god so the lord god the Holy Spirit spoke deeply to your life throughout the entire service. How about the water and the bread? The bread is to satisfy your needs and the water is to quench your thirst. Oil, water and bread, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. That's what it means. You are receiving 
all three tonight in salvation Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us stand up. Want to sing also? Still? Let's finish with the glorification. Amen. Okay. Not a door, because for the beginning of the service, I've already spoken to us. We're thankful to you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, because I have intimacy with you, Lord. Because we are people that are related to you. Maybe people that's not being deceived. I particularly want to glorify your name. Because for those days, it was good to be in a house. But your presence was not lacking my life. I want to testify also that the the message that I heard tonight came to my heart. Your servant Lord preached this word it was because you are a God that reveals the secrets and to tell your church so that we can experience this that you touched me to say this and I glorify your name tonight Lord because everything that you have done is for the glory and honor of your name you are a living God you are a God that is not in the tomb it is in our, you are in our hearts we praise you for everything that I have done and tonight and continue to do because only you are God the grace of the of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. This coming Saturday, we're going to have an event with the youth. Throughout this entire month, we prayed and sought the Lord. And now at the end of the month of May, we're going to have this event in Hollandale. 
where we're going to gather the brethren from Brandon, Orlando, and Pompano. It's going to be evangelization on the afternoon, a special service at night. And on Sunday morning, we're going to have a Sunday school, and then afterwards, uh, Gospel Without Borders. All the youth, they are free to participate. Saturday, we don't want to see any youth here in my church. Only uh, my, for my age up should be here, but everyone else should be there to participate in this event with the Lord. I know also the church wants to go there, right? You need to pray and ask, say, ask if Ronido is going to allow the church to go, but for now, only the youth can go. Amen? If you said the Lord Jesus. If you desire prayer and clarification of the, word, the gifts, we are here to give you the proper assistance. We are going to have a short meeting with the youth, with Brother Luciano. It's going to be small. I want to decide a little detail regarding the us without board and to all the peace of the Lord. <laughs>